Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Monday, March 22nd. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Minnesota game is in 164 days. The game against Michigan in 250 days. Ohio State's basketball season is over after a shocking overtime loss to Oral Roberts on Friday. But number one, you know that already. And number two, based on the feedback we've gotten, you'd rather hear about football right now anyway. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk a little football. Uh, my guest is Buckeye Scoop recording analyst Bill Green. He and Mark Givler just released their updated list of the top 30 prospects in the state of Ohio for the class of 2022. There are some big movers on there from the last time they did this. So I wanted to talk about that today. So, Bill, thank you for joining me. Awesome, Tom. Glad to be here, man. But there was a very clear cut number one on this list. Like last time it was like there was a little bit of a debate. This time there was a very clear cut number one and it is a different number one from the last time. So who is at the top of the list for 2022 for the state of Ohio and why did he make such a jump this time? Yeah, no surprise that C.J. Hicks and he, um, man, I mean, he has taken a leap, not just in the rankings, but he took a leap in his play. Um, I saw him, you know, a little more than a year or a little less than a year ago. He was at this combine they had in Columbus. Under Armour put it on and I was just blown away by, you know, the size, the speed, the change of direction, just everything. You know, everything he did was wow. You know, he was in a group with Sean Murphy. And in terms of combine stuff, athletic ability, change of direction, speed, length, there was no comparison. So, you know, CJ, but then, you know, you got to do it on the field. And I thought CJ's sophomore year was okay, but I didn't think he took a leap as a sophomore from where he was as a freshman. But then last year, it was unbelievable. I mean, they've always played him in space, which is going to serve him well down the road. But they played him, you know, he did a lot of things closer to the line of scrimmage. You know, really, to me, he's not just going to be a three-down linebacker. You know, he's going to be a, a, a really great on all three downs. You know, he's going to be a guy who can stop the run. He will absolutely be able to cover a tight end or a back out of the backfield. And he is going to be a holy terror coming off the edge or sending him up the middle as a blitzer. So, you know, you combine that that 6'3 long arm frame, he's going to end up playing at 240 pounds and speed is amazing. So there's nothing he can't do on a football field. For him, it's just a question of, you know, working his tail off, which everything we've heard in that area is A+. plus. So he's as close to a sure thing as there is. To me, he's... Um, you know, like Jack Sawyer or Paris Johnson, where they're they're five stars. And if they don't get hurt and they don't get caught up in high street, there's almost no chance that those guys aren't early starters and really, really good. So I have CJ in that class. Um, if someone wants to tell me he's one of the top 10 players in America for his class, I'm not going to argue. I mean, he's really he's got to the point where the potential has always been off the charts, but then last year as a junior, you saw the production kind of marry up with the potential and, you know, sky's the limit for that kid. And I really, I really mean that. He is someone who, you know, I think people always, when you, when you're talking about a high school player, it's like, okay, well, who, which former Buckeye would this guy line up as, you know, who, who does he kind of project as if you want to throw a comp on him? And, you know, Darren Lee is the name that I think we've heard a lot with regard yeah. to CJ Hicks. But I mean, in the you and Mark Givler did a podcast that gives in the bank podcast uh, late last week, kind of explaining this list in a little more detail. And I would recommend everyone listen to that whole thing because there's a ton of great information in there. But I mean, it sounds like this this might be a like Darren Lee plus kind of situation with CJ Hicks, where he may be ahead of where Darren Lee was. And, you know, Darren Lee was a All-American in a first yes. round draft pick. Yes. And, and, you know, and all we can really compare them is Darren. You know, at the end of his junior year to where, you know, he was coming to camp fighting for an offer. OK, Darren was probably going to head to Boston College or somewhere like that. If Ohio State wouldn't offer, maybe Michigan State. I mean, C.J. Hicks is an Alabama, Clemson, USC, Texas type of group. OK, so to me, he's way ahead of where Darren Lee was heading into their senior year. Now, Darren had a really, really good senior year. And then in Ohio State, you know, um, his play on the field speaks for itself and how good he was. So 
Can CJ get to that point? I don't know. We're going to find out. But as, you know, a kid heading into his senior year, CJ is probably faster, twitchier, definitely longer, taller. I mean, you know, at this stage of there, at 17 years old, I would take CJ, I mean, way over Darren Lee. Darren Lee had to come to camp, you know, 100 times before Urban would sign off on him. I think Ohio State was sold on CJ, you know, pretty early in the process. One thing that was interesting about your list is, you know, the top player in the state seems like a pretty clear answer right now. And then everything after that is just like, well, you could kind of throw eight names in the hat and come up with two through nine in the state. And, you know, it sounds like you and Mark think that next level of the players is packed together there, you know, really closely. One of them, though, is Emil Wagner. He is an offensive lineman from Huber Heights, Wayne. You, you may remember that high school program from such players as Braxton Miller. They've had to say school that has produced some talent over the years. Um, Wagner just earned an OSU offer very recently, so he may be people that something that people don't necessarily know a ton about. But it sounds like he's someone that you think might have a very wide range of possible outcomes in terms of the college level. Yeah, I mean, he he's a kid that I thought there was, you know, a lot to like about Emil, and I think there's a lot that's, you know, we need to see more out of Emil. You know, he's not Paris Johnson, where, you know, first look, it's like, yeah, I want that guy on my old line. You know, it wasn't that way with me. Ohio State really wanted to see some boxes checked off. And I think they kind of know where they're headed with, you know, some of the Zach Rice and, and then that crew. So I think it made sense, you know, kind of to offer a meal. Now, I probably would have waited. I would have liked to seen him come to camp and match him up, you know, with some speed rusher defensive ends, with some full monster guys, physical guys are going to come right at him see how I handle it, but, you know, they must be sold on him. And like I say, if you're going to kind of reach on a guy, um, man, I'm going to reach on that size and that length. I mean, he is an absolute tackle. No doubt about it. He's not a tweener. He's not a questionable guy. He is a tackle, and they need tackle. So I have no problem with the offer at all, and I think odds are, uh, odds are pretty good that Emil is going to get to the size he needs to be and I think he's got a chance to be a pretty good player, you know, for Ohio State. So a lot, a lot of upside. And, you know, some question marks there. Like, I hate using the term boom and bust. And I say it every podcast, and I use it every podcast. <laughs> and, and I wish there was something better to say, because he's not going to bust. I mean, he's too good a kid in the classroom and the character. So he's not going to bust. But the boom, I mean, he could end up being, you know, a first-round NFL draft pick because of the position he plays. So we'll see. Like I said, he's not, he's not going to bust. You know, he's he's got enough talent and he's got enough guts and heart and desire. It's going to make him not bust. So, but the boom is what you know we're kind of all excited to see. Just what that boom is. Yeah, there, there's a lot of development that probably needs to happen between now and him stepping on the field as a starting a lot. offensive lot. lineman. As a, in a, you know, and there's a lot that can happen between point A and point B. But right, yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the question. There is there someone that is further down the list, you know, maybe outside the top 10, because you guys did top 30 in the state. So maybe someone outside the top 10 or so who you think might end up much higher on the list than they are right now, or maybe, you know, maybe or this is someone that you're much higher on than the overall list kind of reflects right now. You know, those guys were so bunched up, Tom, that, I mean, there could be a guy that's at 15 right now that ends up being three. You know, later, I, I almost hate to throw out a name, you know, because they're all so bunched up. And, and I had a hard time with this. I'm going to be honest. And I think Mark did, too. And, you know, I had worked all those years at either Scout or 24-7 and did the Ohio rankings every year and then had to, you know, sort of support those rankings when I went to Alan True. And he kind of had final say. And Alan and I worked so well together. You know, and it was such a joy to do rankings for all those years with Alan. And then you come here to the scoop and we don't know each other. We've all competed against each other before. And working with Mark was such a joy because I found the same thing with Mark that I found with Alan. You know, you you just can't have the fanboy attitude when you're doing rankings. It just can't work that way. And it does work that way way too many times. And so I was glad Mark and I really... You know, and I'm kind of an opinionated guy where if I believe in something strongly, I'm going to fight to the death. 
you know, and, and I'm not going down. Th- well, this time I didn't feel that way, you know, and I don't think Mark did either. So it was like, you know, Mark would be like, can I put Jair Brown at two? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely put him at two. He might be two. He might be eight, but he might be two. And Gabe Powers, who I think in my personal list would be two. And Mark's like, can I put him at three or four? Man? Yeah, heck yeah. You know, so with this group, I think what we need is we really need the camps, you know, Under Armour and stuff like that coming up in the next couple of weeks. And they're having those camps now, which is awesome. And then we need the Ohio State camp too. And then we need to see these kids in two a days and in their scrimmages. And then we need to see them on the field. So the final rankings here may not look like what they look like today. So I even hate to throw a name out right now. I, I want to see all these guys. CJ, I'm really sold on. I mean, I'm, I, I got him down in ink. In, I mean, in paint. So, but the rest of them, man, I need to see. So I hate to even throw a name out right now. The list is there. And. You know, look at two to 30 and that thing could be jumbled here in the next couple of months. Yeah, the, it, the, 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 my next question was going to be, was it this particular group of kids or just the lack of an opportunity to evaluate these kids over the last year? It sounds like it's the latter that, yeah, you know, without those camps, of both. yeah, yeah, I without mean, those camps, without the, you know, two a days last fall, all that kind of stuff. I mean, that that makes a big difference. And, yes. and I think schools schools are probably going through that right now as well. They just are. not. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Well, you can find that whole list of the top 30 uh, at BuckeyeScoop.com. That is a that is free content for you right now. So just go to BuckeyeScoop.com. You can find that. I will include a link to that post in the uh, in the uh, post for this podcast. That'll be on the front page of Buckeye Scoop as well. And as I mentioned, you can listen to Bill and Mark break down their decision making process for the top 10 of that list in the Gives in the Bank podcast. They dropped that last week. That is a very informative listen. Uh, you also just released a new bank blog column. You have been busy, Bill. My goodness. Um, that is that is for subscribers only, but we want to give you guys a little taste of that one as well. Um, that was an update on five out-of-state prospects for, that Ohio State's interested in for 2022. Uh, one of them was Addison Nichols. He is a four-star 2022 offensive tackle out of Norcross, Georgia. Um, share a little bit about him as a prospect and where the, you think the Buckeyes might stand with him right now. He's been thought all along to be a Georgia lock. He's a Georgia kid. And, you know, they Kirby Smart recruits so well. I mean, he's just a tremendous recruiter. But the information I've got is that he is not a lock to Georgia at all. And might just not be a guy that kind of fits in uh, in that locker room and in that program. We'll see. But um, I think Ohio State, if I had to make a pick right now, I probably would pick Ohio State for this kid. I think he fits so well with the staff at Ohio State, with the other commits at Ohio State. He's got an official visit. He's got a bunch of them set up, to be honest. And I think Ohio State gets the last one. So I I think Ohio State can get this kid. I really do. And I think he's a really good player, fundamentally sound, does everything right, run block, pass block, just just a great kid from a heck of a, a great school. So he's been taught to play the game the right way. There is so much to like you know, with Addison Nichols. And I think Ohio State is the leader right now. So, and he, you know, he's a tackle. He's not a left tackle. He's a right tackle, maybe a guard. Yeah, we'll see, you know. Um, But I think Ohio State is the leader there. And I I really think that, you know, the official visits are going to tell the tale. But I think Ohio State can pull this kid. And I, I would be really excited about him if they can get him. Well, Buckeye Scoop members can find that full article, the full bank blog with uh, all five guys. There's an update on uh, Keontae Goodwin, who is an offensive tackle who could very well end up as a five-star or very, very high four-star prospect before all is said and done. Uh, Also, three very highly touted defensive tackles, including a pair of five stars from down south. That is uh, for Buckeye Scoop members only. You can find that at uh, BuckeyeScoop.com. I will, again, link that in the, uh, the post with this podcast on the front page of the site. But uh, that is just one of the many, many reasons you should consider becoming a member of BuckeyeScoop.com today. We are uh, heading into spring ball right now. The Buckeyes are having their second practice today. We're going to be talking to Ryan Day a little bit later on today. We're going to start doing some uh, interviews with uh, players from a couple different position groups later this week. There's going to be a ton of content and a lot to uh, a lot to know and a lot to uh, follow along at BuckeyeScoop.com. It is a very busy and exciting time on the Ask the Insiders board. Lots of conversation. Uh, lots of good information coming out from uh, the inside of practice that uh, you just can't find anywhere else because no one else has Nevada Buck. Sorry, 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 if you, sorry, sorry, you don't have Nevada Buck, but we do. And you can find him at BuckeyeScoop.com. So you can get all of his great insights from inside practice, uh, all the coverage you've come to know and love from our uh, 
incredibly deep team at BuckeyeScoop.com. Uh, so you should consider becoming a member today. And also make sure you do check out that Gives in the Bank podcast that dropped uh, over the weekend. That is uh, a fantastic listen, uh, as well as the rest of our uh, rest of our podcasts on the Buckeye Scoop Podcast Network. Just uh, go to your podcast platform of choice and search Buckeye Scoop to find all of those. You can subscribe right there. Also, leave us a five-star rating and review. And of course, one more thing, check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. You can subscribe to our channel there and you'll get notified every time we put up new content. We had a uh, video from Inside Ohio State Practice that we put up over the weekend. We had uh, Today we'll have a Ryan Day interview we'll put up. Lots of fun stuff. All of our podcasts are up there. Lots of good stuff. Uh, all uh, all for free. YouTube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. All you have to do is subscribe. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.